everyone, and welcome to this edition of the Bremerton Beat Blast. I'm your host, Kitsap Sun reporter Josh Farley. I'm standing in front of Susanna's Antiques on Callow Avenue in Bremerton, and as usual, I've got five stories that you just got to know about happening in your town this week. So let's get started. Story number one happens to be right here on Callow Avenue. Susanna's Antiques is the brainchild of Susanna Waldbillig and her husband, Bernie, and they decided they wanted to open a big antique store. What do I mean by big? They started in a very small space. Now they have over 5,400 square feet of space to work with inside their antique store. And I asked Susanna why they wanted to be a part of the Callow Avenue neighborhood. It's always been my dream. I knew this area had a lot of potential and, um, and I love the Charleston name and I'd love to see it all come back again. Susanna's Antiques will have their grand opening from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. both Saturday and Sunday. Story number two on our list this week comes to us just up the road on Callow Avenue. A judge has ruled that the fireworks stand that was formerly up the street, not far from Hilo Cafe, can no longer operate. It is federal land and trust, and its owners for a long time have gotten a permit from the Squamish tribe to sell tribal fireworks there, but no more. That's not going to happen anymore. According to the judge's ruling, they're going to have to go out and get a proper state license as well as city permitting if they are to sell fireworks there anymore. The owners of the fireworks stand actually were not planning to sell any this year as it turns out. Story number three on our list this week is some old film reels that were recovered by the police department last fall have been found. We promoted it on the Bremerton Beat blog and sure enough the family has now come forward to recover those reels. I'm working on a follow-up story. I hope to have more coverage this week but it's great news. All of those film reels with all of those memories that they had in the 1950s and 60s, weddings, birthday parties, etc. are going to their rightful owner. Story number four on our list this week has to do with our water system. Many of you have probably seen the coverage out of Flint, Michigan and the horrible things that are happening there with lead. Well, good news for the city of Bremerton, we don't have many, if any, lead lines in our water system. Well, one of the first things we are very fortunate in Bremerton is that we have such a pristine water supply. There are no contaminants in our water supply because we're the headwaters of the Union River and that's where the majority of our water comes from. In 1999, we installed our corrosion control facility. So it's been in place uh, for 17 years now and uh, we test uh, the sample of the water to verify that the corrosion control is working and it is. So um, we're very proud of that and work very hard with uh, our water system and with our regulators at Department of Health to make sure that treatment is working like it should. And finally, story number five, our last one, comes to us by way of Derek Lyons. Derek took this photo of Oyster Bay, a really silly story here. I have no idea who did this or why, but someone threw a giant teddy bear into Oyster Bay. It's nonsensical, it doesn't make any sense. I'm hoping that there was not some kind of bad Valentine's Day breakup, but Derek caught this photo on Friday. We still have no idea why it was found there and probably never will. That's going to do it for this edition of the Bremerton Beat Blast. I'd encourage you to come out to Kitsap Quiz Night on Thursday night, 7 p.m. at the Manette Saloon. We'll recap all the month's news. This month's feature is pop culture, so come on down if you have the time. Otherwise, I hope you have a great rest of your week, and we'll see you again next Tuesday.